welcome to Shiloh, advancing the kingdom of God, cause where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, welcome to Shiloh, advancing the kingdom of God, so clap your hands and dance along with us, yeah, welcome to Shiloh. Good morning, Shalom. As we lift up the name of Jesus during this praise and worship, I want you to join in with me. Come on. Just do what I say. Come on, y'all. Listen. I want to clap a little louder than before. Come on, clap. I want to sing a little louder than before. Come on, sing. I want to jump higher than before. Jump with me. I'm going to shout low, yeah. I'm walking in freedom, yeah. I'm walking in freedom. 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 We'll do it again. Listen. I want to clap a little louder than before. Come clap. I want to sing a little louder than before. I'm going to sing, y'all. Oh, 
y'all to make this declaration that you're expecting great things. Come on. If God has brought you through this year, last year, and this year, he has done more than enough. And he continues to do great things. So come on. As the Bible declares that he has an expected end for you, we can make this declaration. Come on, y'all. Say it with me. Just call and response. Here we go. Listen. It goes like this. I'm expecting great things. Expecting great things. I expecting great things. Oh, great things. I expecting great things. I expecting great things. Oh, I expect. See you. 
church good morning and praise the lord it is a good day to give thanks unto the lord i'm glad that my father woke me up this morning and started me on my way and gave me this opportunity to stand before you to proclaim his word i want to give an honor to my lord and savior jesus christ who woke me up this morning who started me on my way who gave me life health and strength i want to give an honor to Pastor Cheeks and First Lady for just giving me this opportunity to stand before you to proclaim the word of the Lord in their stand and in their stand. I just want to give an honor to everybody who is listening to me on Facebook and on YouTube Live. Thank you for just getting up this morning to come and hear the word that the Lord has for us today. I'm not going to be before you long. I am going to go ahead and get into the word. So if you would, can you turn your Bibles with me to the Gospel of Matthew? The Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter, and I'm going to start reading at the 22nd verse, and I'm going to go down to the 33rd verse. Again, Matthew chapter 14, starting at verse 22, and going down to verse 33. And if you have it, would you all stand for the reading of God's Word? And it reads as follows. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat 
and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was ready, already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. And shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. Let us bow our head with a word of prayer. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you for this preaching hour. Lord, we thank you for just waking us up this morning, Heavenly Father, giving us another opportunity to worship and praise your holy name. Lord, we thank you for just touching us with your healing hand, Heavenly Father. We thank you for giving us peace of mind, Heavenly Father. And Lord, now I ask that you just decrease me. Move me to the background so that you and your word may shine forward and come forward. Lord, we ask that you open up our hearts, open up our minds, allow us to receive the word that you have for us this morning. Lord, we ask you all these things in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now this time, from the scriptures that I read, I want to speak to you from the subject entitled, Taking the First Step. Taking the First Step. The Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu made a statement that says, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Now, there are several ways to look at this saying. One way you can look at this saying is that it means that great things always come and always start from humble beginnings. See, very few people were, bo were born great straight out of the womb. They had to work hard for what they achieved. And with each little step they made on their journey toward their goal, they began to learn more and more about themselves, about their abilities, about their strengths. And they even learned more about the God that they served and the love that he has for them and how he would do anything to help them and to make them successful and to help them to reach the goal that they have set for themselves and that he has had set for them. Another way to look at the saying is that in order to reach the goals or the dreams that you have in life, you need to take that first step to begin the journey. See, a goal without any action behind it is only a wish. And I dare to say this morning that everybody who is hearing this sermon today, whether it be on Facebook Live or YouTube, has some type of goal, some type of dream, has an ambition, has a desire of something that they want to achieve or accomplish. And that, that desire is so strong it's so pressing in their lives that it has caused some sleepless nights, I dare to say. It has caused some anxious days. 
It has caused an overwhelming sense of its excitement at the mere thought of grabbing hold of it and having it to become reality. See, but in order to turn this dream, turn that desire, make that vision into reality, we are going to have to take some type of action because it is not going to just fall out of the sky into our laps. It would be nice if it did that, though. Am I right about it? See, when, when God gives us the visualization of that vision, the visualization of that gold in our subconscious mind, he provided us with a glimpse of what his plans for us, for us are and where he is trying to lead us to. But for us to get there, we must take the first step. Now, you need to get used to hearing that word, take the first step, because that's going to be my main theme throughout this sermon. And I dare to say you're going to be hearing that quite a few times throughout this message. So we need to take the first step. Stop procrastinating. Stop being lazy. Get up and move. And I guarantee you that if you get up and move and take that step towards God, God will take care of the rest. See, many of us have unrealized dreams, unmet ambitions, because we have failed to do the simplest, yet the hardest thing to do. And that is to take that first step. Make that move towards God and move towards what he says is for you. We sit on our hands, hoping and waiting for that blessing, for that miracle to appear out of nowhere, to materialize in front of our face. But that is not how God has designed this thing to be, church. You see, God designed the pathway to your vision and your blessing to be interactive. Meaning that we're gonna to have to be participants and not just spectators in our blessings and the achievement of our goals. See, the goal given to us by God was just the end point of the journey, church. We need to take care and how we, how we go about doing the journey is up to us. We have to choose whether we're going to move or whether we're going to stay still. Are we going to go ahead and move towards the vision that God has shown us, believing and having faith that God will light the pathway for us and guide us to our destination? And if you fail to reach your destination, don't blame God, church. Don't blame anyone else. The blame falls solely on your shoulders because the pathway has already been laid out. The directions have already been provided to you. The issue is you are still in the same place as you were before because you decided that you did not want to get up and move. See, there's a saying that says you can't finish a journey that you never even begin. See, Shiloh, I, I need you to understand that God has designed your journey. He has designed my journey as a way to test us, strengthen us, and mature us because he knows with the way that we are now, we are not ready or able to take hold of that blessing or that vision or that gold that he had shown to you. But if you allow God to help you, church, if you allow God to guide you along the way, then when you finally reach the end of the journey, you will realize that you are ready to grab hold 
of what God has destined and designed for you. And you will understand why you had to go through what you had to go through, why you had to deal with what you had to deal with, why you had to overcome with what you had to overcome. God is going to make all that plain once you get to the end. And then when you look back, you're going to see why you had to go through it. And that, that's what God does in our journey that we call life. Every obstacle that we face makes us stronger. And once we overcome that obstacle, then we will get the understanding as to why that obstacle was put in front of us to begin with. And then we start the next leg of our journey, and then we run into a couple of roadblocks here and there. And once we get through those roadblocks, God will then allow us to see why we had to go through the roadblocks, because it's, it's, it makes us who we are today. Now, I, I know taking that first step toward that dream, toward that goal, whether it be trying to start a business or, or, or taking a new job or moving to a new city or trying to become the best version possible of ourselves is scary. I know it's frightening. I, I, I know it makes you shiver a little bit because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what awaits you. But I, I want you to know that when you decide to move, you're not going to be moving alone. You're not going to be walking this journey all by yourself. Because with every step you take, there is another set of footprints walking right beside you. And those footprints belong to God. With every step, with every mile you go, God is going to be there with you each and every step of the way. He's going to be there for you. And all the way to the end, God is never going to leave your side. I know it may seem like you're alone. I know it may seem like you're walking this journey by yourself, but I can guarantee you that God is with you. And he tells us that he is never going to leave us or forsake us. So when you think that you are alone, I just suggest that you look down and see those footprints that's beside you. And then get courage and confidence knowing that you got the best friend that you could ever have with you on this journey. And this friend is never going to let you down. This friend is always going to be there for you when you need him. He's always going to have a shoulder for you to cry on. He's always going to have a bosom for you to rest in when you get weary from your journey. And sometimes he's going to even pick you up and carry you parts of the way until you're strong enough to walk on your own. Now, the question that I want to raise for you this morning is this. What must we do to take that first step toward the vision that God has given us? Let me say that again. What must we do to take that first step towards the vision that God has given us? Well, Shallow, the first thing that we must do is to overcome our fear. Overcome our fear of leaving our comfort zone and moving into a world of the unknown. See, the, the comfort zone of our present situation prevents us from forging ahead into the scary abyss of the unknown future. See, it is this fear that stops us from moving forward and keeps us stationary where we are. See, our body may want to move, but our mind is so gripped with fear it prevents that movement from happening. And, and if we could just get over our fears, church, if we can get over that fear that prevents us from moving forward, 
Sometimes we have a fear of failure. Sometimes we have a fear of success. And yes, people are afraid of success. That's why a lot of people don't get started with their journey because they think to themselves, what happens if I actually succeed with what I'm doing? What awaits me, waits for me if I actually take hold of this vision and this goal that God has given to me? So that, that fear of success is just as big as that fear of failure. See, once you start your journey, once you take that necessary first step, the next step will get easier. And the step after that will get even easier than the first one. Once you overcome that first step fear, nothing the enemy does or tries to throw in your way will be able to keep you from reaching your goal. Now, now let me, let's go to the scripture. Let me see if I can make this plain for you. Now, if we go to the text, we see in the text that Jesus was off praying. And he sent the disciples ahead of him out to sea. They were in a boat on the middle of the sea, and the storms were raging all around them. Now, the first part of this thing, we need to see that sometimes you need to go away and pray. And that's what Jesus did. And then after he had finished, he came to the disciples on the boat, walking on the lake. And when they saw him, they believed him to be a spirit or a ghost, and they cried out with great fear. And Jesus calmed them by saying, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Oh, it is amazing to know that when we're going through the midst of chaos and storms in life, the word of Jesus, the voice of Jesus can calm us down and to help take away our fear. Now, Peter, being Peter, he said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come on the water. And Jesus said, come. Now, Peter's action reminds me of how we do sometimes when we, we hear God's voice and we, we don't believe it. And we say, Lord, if this be you, cause this to happen. Lord, if this be you, allow me to do this. Now, I, I wonder, do we ask him those questions or do we challenge him knowing he's going to give us the answer that we seek? Or do we ask him those questions and challenge him, hoping he stays silent? Mm. Think about that. I don't know what was going through Peter's mind when he said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. Did he know or think, God is going to tell me to come and I'm going to go walk on this water? Or did he say, oh, he ain't going to, I hope he stays silent. He ain't going to tell me to come and walk on this water. Think about that. Are we crying out to God for an answer? Or are we crying out to God hoping that he stays silent? Now, now I, I don't know what was going through Peter's mind at that moment. But many of us would have said, when Jesus said, come, many of us would say, hold up. What do you mean, come, Jesus? I, I, I don't feel any different. I don't feel like there's any type of power coming up inside of me? And, and, and I'm supposed to feel some type of way? And I'm supposed to feel something to be able to step out of this boat and walk on the water? But Peter, he took that first step. When Jesus said, come, Peter stepped outside the boat. And once he got outside the boat, he began to walk on water. He began to walk on water just like Jesus. See, when God bids you to come and gives you permission, church, then it is up to us to take that first and that next step. See, no one can take that first step for you. No one can walk your journey for you. 
You are the only one that can take that first step. You are the only one that can walk your journey. So when God calls for you, when God bids us to come, don't have a second thought. Step out. Step out on faith. Step out on belief. Step out knowing that God has got your back, just like Peter did. Peter stepped out there knowing that God had got it. The next thing we must do in order to take that first step is to have faith. See, once your fears have been overcome, the next thing you need to do is to have faith and believe that God will order your steps and God will light your path towards your destination. When you take that step out into the unknown and the unwalked path in which you don't know what twists and turns await you, you got to have faith. You must believe that everything is going to work out just fine and that God is not going to lead you astray. And that's the way God wants it. He wants us to believe in him. He wants us to put everything in his hands. He just needs us to take that step and move forward in faith and in belief. Now, I know that doing something new can be scary. But God will not have set you on this journey if he did not intend to provide you with the necessary resources to help you make it through to the end. See, we, we need to believe, church, that we need to believe in him. We need to get up off the couch. We need to get up off the sofa. We, we, we need to put the recliner back into its upright position. We need to throw back the covers on the bed and decide that today is the day that I'm going to take that first step toward the vision and the goal that God has shown for me. And that nothing is going to keep you from obtaining it. And then we need to proceed to move in faith and in the will of God. We, we may not be able to see the whole picture, church, when it comes to God and what he has in store for us. But we don't have to. We just need to have faith in God. And if you do that, then all the pieces of the puzzle will slowly begin to fall in place. Just like when you're putting together a puzzle, you look at the box, and then you look at all these scattered pieces. Then as you start putting it together, most time you start with the outside. And then as you start seeing it, and you start putting it together piece by piece, then the vision starts coming into clarity, starts coming into focus. See, God will give us the rest of the puzzle pieces. We just need to believe. We just need to have faith. And we just need to move when he tells us to move. Just like Abraham did back in the Old Testament. God just says, get up and go south. I'm not going to tell you where to go. I'm not going to tell you how far you got to go. I just need you to get up and go south. And Abraham had faith and got up and proceeded to move. He didn't know where he was going. He had no clue of the direction. He had no clue of the turns and the twists that he was going to have to go through. Same thing with us. When God tells us to get up and move, we just need to get up and move and have faith that God is going to show us what he needs to show us in his time. Now, let's, let's take it back to our scripture. We see Peter called up to God, asked him to bid him to come. And when Jesus bid him to come, Peter stepped out of the boat and started walking on water towards God, towards Christ. See, it was not Peter's power that allowed him to walk on the water. Don't, don't get it twisted. It wasn't Peter's will that allowed him to walk on the water. It was his faith in the power of Jesus that allowed him to do what most would seem to what that allowed him to do to what most would seem impossible, and that is walking on water. See, a lot of times we like to 
say that we pulled ourselves up by our own bootstraps. I really don't like that saying because that intimates that you did everything on your own. That says I got to where I am without anybody's help, without anybody's hand in my life. And I have a problem with that because you didn't get to where you are. I didn't get to where I am today without some help. And that help was God's help. And however God did it, whether he helped me by himself or he touched somebody else and brought them into my life to help me on my way. So you didn't get to where you were by yourself. Somebody gave you a helping hand, whether you knew it or not. So God can command us and tell us to do all kinds of things, and he can command us all day long. But if we don't have faith, it will not become our reality. You see, Peter's faith was not in himself. His faith was in the word and the power of God. And that is what allowed him to walk on water. And that same faith that resides in Peter, that resided in Jesus Christ, also resides in us today, church. We just have to know that without a shadow of a doubt, we can do all things through and in the power of Christ, who is our Savior. Now, who, who's ready to step off the boat with Peter? Who's ready to put your fears into the rearview mirror and begin that long-awaited journey that God has destined us for? Who's ready to step out there knowing that God has got their back? Who's ready to get up and move, not knowing where we're going to go, not knowing the direction we're going to take, not knowing the twists and turns of the road that we're going to be walking on, but knowing that God told me to move, and so I'm going to move, and I'm going to move in faith, I'm going to move in strength, and I'm going to move in confidence that everything is going to be all right. Finally, the last thing that we need to do to take that first step is to stay focused. Stay focused on the one who is our strength. Stay focused on the one who gives us power. Stay focused on the dream. Stay focused on the goal. Stay focused on the vision that was given to us by God. Finally, we must stay focused on the path and the roadway because the enemy is going to do any and everything possible to get us to take our eyes off the prize. Get us to take our eyes off the road. Get us to take our eyes off of God. See, the enemy knows that if our focus is on something else, then in time, we will forget and give up on the vision and give up on following God. That is why he puts all these shiny new objects in our pathway. See, church, it, it takes strength. It takes faith to stay focused on what is truly important, and that is God. If you stay focused on God, then nothing will be able to hinder you from reaching the end of your destination or the end of your journey and making that vision or that goal that God had given to you become a reality. See, we, we need to just stay, it's easier said than done. See, we, we, focus requires a lot of concentration. It requires that you block out everything going on around you. And with the way that this world is, it seems like each and every day, each and every hour, each and every minute, it's a whole lot of chaos and a whole lot of calamity that's swirling around in us, swirling around us. It seems like we're constantly in a storm. And when you're in a storm, it's hard to focus on anything but all that stuff that's going around. See, now let's, let's take a look back at the scripture one last time and we'll see what happened to Peter. We already know he stepped off the boat. He started walking on water. And the reason he was able to do that is because he was focused on that which gave him strength, on that which gave him power, and that was Jesus Christ. And the longer he stayed focused on Christ, 
the longer he stayed up and walking on the water. See, we, we need to have that laser focus on God. Because if you don't have focus on God, it won't matter. If you got focus on God, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. But if you take your focus off God for just a second, like Peter did, then we will begin to sink and be taken down into the sea of life and all of its troubles. You see, see, Peter was fine. The storm was still happening when he got off the boat. The winds were still swirling when he got off the boat. The waves were still crashing when he got off the boat. But yet he still walked on water because he wasn't looking at all that. He was looking at Christ. But then all of a sudden he began to take his eyes off of Christ and start looking at what's going on around him. And the minute he did that, he started sinking into the sea. See, church, it only takes one second of wandering focus. It only takes one second of wavering faith for us to lose our way and to veer off the beaten path. That is why we must have daily prayer and supplication with the Lord and ask that he keep us steady and steadfast. That's why I say it's easier said than done, because all it takes is one second. That's all it took Peter, one second, to lose focus, to take his eyes off God before he began to sink. And that's all it takes for us is one second to lose focus, take our eyes off God, and we end up veering off the beaten path and getting lost into the darkness of this world. But we need to ask God to order our footsteps. We need to ask him to give us strength. We need to ask him to help us to resist the temptation and the wiles of this world. We need to ask him to allow us to always strive for becoming one with him. That is why we see in the beginning of the scripture, Jesus had to go and be by himself, and he had to go and pray because he knew that he knew that prayer is what he needed in order for him to keep focus on what he needed to do, keep focus on the task he needed to focus on. And if prayer is good enough for Jesus, why ain't it good enough for us? We're no better than Jesus is. We're, we're nowhere close to Jesus. So we need to have daily prayer because daily we are always getting something thrown at us from the enemy. Daily, we're always facing temptations. And so daily, we need to go down on our bended knee, get into our secret closet, and talk to God, and ask him to give us strength so that we can stay focused on him, so that we can stay focused on his word, so that we can stay focused on the goal that he has set for us, and help us to Stay focused on making that goal and making that vision into reality. Ask him to just allow us to take that first step and then to take the next step after that and the next step after that and take it in faith without fear and in focus. Now, I'm almost done. I'm, I'm coming to the conclusion of my sermon, but give me just a little while longer and I won't let you, I won't keep you long. I'll let you go so you can have brunch and start making our Sunday dinner. But we have no right, church, to complain to God about how long or how tedious our journey is if we're still sitting on the sidelines and have yet to take that first step. See, all journeys require movement. My brothers and sisters, all journeys require us to get up and move. So you can't hope to reach the end and receive the reward if you're still standing where you're at, if you're stagnant, if you're still in your comfort zone. If you're going to follow Christ and you're going to call yourself a Christian, you can't be comfortable. Because if you're following Christ and you're comfortable, then you need to take, need to take a look at who you actually follow. Because God never promised us that if we follow him, we're going to have a comfortable life. 
He never promised us that if we follow him, everything was going to be hunky-dory. He never promised us that if we follow him, we're not going to have to deal with any trials or tribulations or roadblocks or obstacles. And if you're saying that he told you that, you need to take a look at the book that you're reading because it's not the Bible and it's not the word of God. See, when, when God calls us to come, church, we have to trust him. We have to have faith. And we have to believe that he has our best interests in heart. And we need to head out on that journey because it is a journey that's going to change our life for the better. See, because of our sin sickness, church, we have been separated from our Heavenly Father. And Jesus came down to show us the way back to our heavenly home. Jesus tells us in the scripture that no man comes to the Father except through him. And he came to call us home to where we belong. The question is, will we take that first step? Will we get up out of the boat? Will we take that first step? and walk a road that's less traveled? Will we take that first step and begin the journey that will lead to a better life for you and your family? Will we take that first step and leave your fears behind and walk in faith? Will we take that first step and walk with focus and with purpose keeping our eyes on the prize, keeping our eyes on the one who gives us strength, keeping our eyes on the one who gives us power, keeping our eyes on the one who orders our footsteps. Are we going to stay focused on the journey? Are we going to stay focused on where God is leading us to? Are we going to stay focused on the vision that he had put into our subconscious mind, on the vision that he has shown us so long ago? See, we've become lost, church. We've become stranded. And we need to stay focused on the light. When you stay focused on the light, you know where you're going to go. But the minute you take your focus off the light, then you get trapped in darkness. See, Jesus is our light. Jesus is our strength. Jesus is the one who gives us our, is the one that we should have faith in. He's the one that orders our footsteps, church. He's the one that's calling us to come to him. He's right where we left him at. He didn't leave us. We left him. And yet he's still calling us to come. Now, are you going to come? Are you going to take that first step? Are you going to get up and move? Or are you going to stand still or stay where you at? That's, the, that's my sermon today. Now's the time I'm going to open up the doors of the church. Is there one? Is there one who wants to answer the call? Answer God's call when he says to come. Is there one who wants to uh, acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior of our life? Acknowledge him as our strength. Acknowledge him as our provider. He's calling us to come, church. Will you come? Will you answer the call? Don't stand still. Don't stay where you are. Because staying where you are is not going to get you to the goal that God has promised us. It's not going to get you to the vision that God has shown you. He's calling us today, church. So is that one that's going to answer the call? If you won't answer the call, just go down on your knees where you are right now and just say, Lord, here I am. Say, Lord, come into my life. Lord, I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. And see, won't he come in? And see, won't he change you? See, won't he make you into a new creature? Just answer his call. He's calling out to us, church. He's crying out to you. He's calling out to you. Will you answer? Second call. Is there anyone who has 
admitted that God is their is their savior, but they you just haven't been living the way that you need to live. And you need to rededicate yourself to him. Now is the time and the opportunity to rededicate yourself. We're never lost from God's sight. God knows exactly where we are. Even though we may not know where he is, he knows where we are. And he has his hands outstretched waiting for us to come back to him. If you want to rededicate yourself, just, just reach out to God, close your eyes, and just say, Lord, help me to rededicate my life. Help me to live the way I'm supposed to be living. Help me to do the things that you asked and called me to do. And open up your heart. Open up your mind to him, church. Allow him to lead you. Allow him to guide you. He is not going to lead you astray. He is not going to guide you into dangerous situations that you can't overcome. Have faith. Believe that everything is going to be all right. Believe that God has got you. And that he's going to guide you to where he needs you to be. Last call, if you're looking for a church home, you don't have a church covering, I want to say that Shallow Baptist Church would love to be your church home. I'm sure to say, I'm sure that Pastor Cheeks and the First Lady Cheeks would love to be your pastor. And I know that the rest of the Shallow family would love to welcome you in to this family culture that we have developed here at Shallow. We're all brothers and sisters to one another. We're never strangers to one another. We'll be willing to accept you in it. If you want to become a part of Shallow Baptist Church, just reach out uh, to the website that's on our screen. Go on the website. Let, the, let us know that you want to become a part of the Shallow family. And one of our new member consultants and new member leaders will reach out to you to let you know what the next steps are. So the three calls of acknowledging Christ, rededicating your life, finding a church covering or a church home, the calls are out there. God is waiting. God is calling us. He's bidding us to come. Will you answer the call? Will you take that first step and move towards him? God bless you.